Hey everyone, I'm Marina Orms and uh, I'm the founder of Astrology Heals. I am super excited today to be doing this joint conversation interview with my good friend Thea Wershing. Thea and I met many years ago uh, studying with Stephen Forrest, studying evolutionary astrology. So we both have the very much the evolutionary approach to astrology. And uh, Thea has done um, uh, this incredible <laughs> creative project of creating a tarot deck. And uh, it's focused on the American Renaissance. It, it brings in a little bit, I'm sure, of her background in astrology. And uh, so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to talk a little bit about astrology and, of course, the, the big excitement of this year, the election coming up, but really in a bigger sense, who we are as Americans, what we are becoming, what it means to go through this time in history. So, um, so welcome, Thea. Thank you so much, Marina. I just so appreciate your poise and your presence. And so I'm just really honored to be here. Thank you. <clears throat> so do, do you want me to explain what the American Renaissance Tarot is? That would be a great place <laughs> to start just to, yeah. Yeah. To... So since this is an astrology audience, um, I could say that this is a project that primarily derives from the last time Neptune was in Pisces. So I'm not sure if I have the dates exact in my head, but it was about 1847 to 1862. And the reason that period is so interesting is because it's the lead up to the Civil War. Okay. And so um, this idea of abolition, right, of uh, freeing America's enslaved people, uh, it had been in the country since the 1600s, right? Like people were discussing it in the 1700s. But it wasn't until this time, um, the 1850s, that it actually gets popular. You know, it gets traction. It really starts heating up. Um, and at the same time, we have this really amazing uh, kind of watershed period for spirituality with the onset of spiritualism. And so a lot of people might not know what that is, but it's essentially mediumship culture. And so just for Americans, there's millions of people, right, that were involved in this movement, um, people started talking to their loved ones on the other side. Okay, so we have these two things in tandem and they actually fed into each other. Like a lot of these political radicals were also involved in the spiritualist movement. So just amazing crossover, right? And so uh, we're at the tail end of another Neptune and Pisces period right now. And so I think that might be, you know, kind of what prompted me on that larger archetypal level to explore this project, right? Because the project has been in, in the works almost the whole time. You know, <laughs> Neptune was in Pisces. I think I started working on it in 2013, right? Um, and it was also the outcome of my uh, PhD research uh, in American literature. So, so that's a little bit about the project and, and we can look at some images. Um, should I, should I say about the American you know, thing? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, <laughs> one of the things I think it's just like, let's just take a moment to, to really recognize, okay, we are at a moment that is coming full cycle from where we were in the lead up to the Civil War. Yeah. You know, and, and when you and I were kind of exchanging some notes yesterday as we were preparing for this. One of the things that clicked for me is not only are we coming full cycle with Neptune in the lead up to the Civil War, but we're also coming full cycle with Pluto, right? Yeah. And the Pluto return right. and Pluto's transition from Capricorn to Aquarius. So both of those things happening at the same time, just really fascinating to think about us as being in a moment of history connected to the history that came before us. And absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's huge. And it's, it's funny, because I, I told you, I started working on the project in 2013. And it didn't wind up getting published until the Pluto return in 2021. You know, I had this idea that was going to happen much faster. And it, but it was just so perfectly on time, right? And I thought, oh, that's what this is about, right? Like we're kind of looking at America's shadow and and how to deal with that. So 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, so I, I want to look at some images uh, that you sent me of your tarot cards, but, but first, can you kind of um, give me a little bit of a sense of how, how would that show up? So the, the, those two things you mentioned, the spiritualist movement and abolition, how do you see that showing up in our times as kind of a full cycle moment? Yeah, I mean, Marina, you probably remember, you know, before 2012, that it, like uh, a lot of people were projecting what's going to happen when Neptune goes into Pisces. And we were saying, well, maybe astrology will get really popular. <laughs> you know, <laughs> lo and behold, I mean, I, I tell yeah. clients all the time, I was like, no one knew their moon sign 20 years ago. It was just me <laughs> talking about it. And you know, the other astrologers. And so now it's, that's like common knowledge and, and astrology apps are just this huge booming business. So, you know, that's definitely been an, an outcome. I think the rise of things like witchcraft and, you know, all, all kinds of um, popular spirituality, as well as things like fake news and AI, you know, like the manipulation of reality. I mean, that is um, Neptune and Pisces as well. And then in terms of um, the political movement, I mean, I would look at the discourse around something like white privilege really mm -hmm. seems to reflect uh, that Neptune and Pisces feeling of uh, having compassion and doing the inner work, right? Like uh, political work is about consciousness raising. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a unique facet of our times as well. Yeah, I love that. I think, I think that, um, the experience of sort of grappling with and thinking about what it, are our bigger principles, what yeah. do we care about, where what where do we find compassion and empathy? These are very Neptunian themes, and awesome. yeah, and this tendency to kind of reach for the easy answer. So the the conspiracy theories, the you know fake news, the misinformation. What is what are we being fed that might look good on the surface, or we might want to kind yeah. of yeah jump in on without really understanding? I mean, so much of of the cult around Trump is really religiously motivated, and I just I read a great book recently called The Undertow, and it was about uh, religious support for Trump, and it's mm. it's kind of like the people who follow him aren't even seeing. The reality is like all a religious projection right and it i mean it was just fascinating and kind of difficult to read but it's it's just so neptune and pisces right we're just kind of projecting our fantasies out there projecting fantasies yeah and and the disillusionment i mean i i notice that this is kind of happening at a time when religion has kind of lost some of its you know, a lot of people are having disillusionment with religion and trauma, even from religion. And it's like, well, if we don't have this, uh, this sense of where we get our morals from, where we, how we know what's right and how we treat one another, we're grasping for how do we do that? Mm -hmm. You know, if religion's not going to be the answer. And, yeah. and one of the things I remember from one of Stephen Forrest's talks about it was about Neptune and he he was talking about how Neptune is this metaphor for the divine mm -hmm. and it's it Neptune in Pisces can be a time when people discover a new metaphor and I've been kind of waiting for like okay well, what's that going to be and <laughs> and mm -hmm. so far you know we haven't had really any really good models to um to re-inspire reinvigorate give us a new way forward and yeah. until kind of with some of this political movement with kamala harris and the re-inspiration the reinvigoration mm -hmm. of values morals like how do we know what's right and wrong let's come back to some of that and yeah i'm i'm thinking just of how um you know it's one of stephen's favorite lines about you know, the dark side of Neptune is you want the consciousness raising, but you'll settle for the junk food. <laughs> so I'm sure more like we've watched more TV probably than we ever have in the last 10 years because of the sophistication, right? It's that Neptune dream factory. And so a lot of us are just being numbed by social media or numbed by, you know, just this constant entertainment factory. 
instead of finding that that more uh new, is it nutritive is that a word like but yeah. more sustenance right like something um more meaty I yeah. guess with the divine so yeah 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 so we'll see I think yeah I think we're still figuring that out and that's part of what we're grappling with with this election is like where are we gonna land on that that's yeah I I mean it's it's funny I knew we would talk about the election and um what I always think about is how the first time Trump ran against Hillary and then you know most astrologers tend to be liberals right that that's usually how it goes not all of them um but everyone predicted Hillary was going to win yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember yeah. that yeah. And there was like one guy who said Trump, right? And <laughs> all the other astrologers said Hillary. And that was just such a profound lesson for me. And like, well, if you're emotionally invested, how clearly can you see? And I'm very emotionally invested in this election. And so I don't trust myself very much because I know the outcome I want. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like why you can't be your own astrologer oftentimes, right? <laughs> because you, you can't see yourself clearly. It's, that's a really good point. Yeah. And I, I don't, um, I, I mean, as my followers know, I don't predict. So I don't, I don't know. I don't have any idea or prediction. Um, but what I look at is like, how, how can we think of this moment? How can we make the most of it? Because, because one of the problems with predicting is yeah. it takes away our agency. We, we don't see ourselves as capable of um, creating or being involved in the outcome. Yeah. And yeah, so so to the um, extent that we are in time and the election is in the future, mm -hmm. it is still an unknown and we still have the ability to influence it and how we show up for ourselves and our communities and the world is yeah. um is still matters so um and and always will so right, right. yeah so so <laughs> i'm just agreeing very hard over here and it's yeah. um i worked with a shaman one time who who talked about that right this making predictions and how toxic it can be and he said it's sorcery it's sorcery like if you tell someone this is what's going to happen you know, you're kind of like shaping the course of their life. And so, yeah, we want to watch that with the election. We don't want people to feel so comfortable that they don't hustle. <laughs> no, yeah. um, and we don't want yeah. them to feel so doomed by an outcome that they just go into inaction. Right. right. So, yeah. right. Big time, big time matters. And, and we have Neptune going into Aries next year. So beginning its shift from Neptune into Aries, where we will um, energetically have more of this uh, air of action. Absolutely. Yeah. Would this yeah. be a good time to maybe show the Neptune uh, sure. the Wheel of Fortune? Is that the... the uh, sure, yeah, we can yeah. do that. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, let me see. And this is the one you said was connected to Neptune. So let me see if I can do this here. No problem. Okay. So did that work? Um, I'm seeing black. Oh, no, no. You know what? It loaded. I think it's just a big file. So yeah. It finally okay. Loaded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so this is a kind of complex composite image. I think this is one of the, the more polarizing images in the deck because um, there there is some sort of magical realism going on, but this is like a little bit even beyond that. Um, so what this has to do with uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who is the magician of the deck and who was a huge contributor to uh, the New Thought movement. Okay, so... Mm -hmm folks and and many of us are still kind of attached to those beliefs um anyway he had this idea that we could become as a transparent eyeball so it was a way of sort of um uniting our will with divine will okay that was his his metaphor was become a transparent eyeball and then his friend a poet drew this character so they were pals and so it's just it was just like kind of a funny thing to put on the wheel of fortune 
And then there's Neptune up in the top corner. Um, so Neptune was discovered right in this period. I'm not remembering the exact year, but I, it was right around the time Neptune went into Pisces. So I think it was 1847, 48, thereabouts. And uh, as we know, as, as astrologers, right, there's a lot of synchronicity around when a planet is discovered. And so uh, what happened is that, again, that spiritualist movement, an alternative to Christianity, took over the United States, right? It became extremely popular. So it, it, there's part of that synchronicity there. And then um, in terms of what, what this wheel has to do with, uh, it, it's sort of like a turn into technology that no one knew was coming, right? And so what people were actually concerned with in the 19th century, they, they sort of didn't uh, predict the way things were going, I guess, like the way tech technology was going to transform everything. So that's why there's an image of a Faraday disc here. So, yeah. And, and yeah, Neptune up there. And so would you say this card has a resonance with our time? With the Wheel of Fortune? Um, that's a good question. I, I think so, just because um, what I talk about in the book, so there's, you know, a pretty meaty book that goes with this. I, I talk about how technology mediates our life. And so our access to technology actually determines the quality of our life. And so I think about, like, say, my son, who's about to turn 10, and he's always grown up with, like, zoom <laughs> capability and i i said to him i was like isn't this cool i talked to my client in hong kong today you know like it's so awesome like we can communicate and he's like yeah whatever you know and, and so i think <laughs> like we are we are so conditioned by the fortunes of our time right and that includes yeah. technology so yeah i think just um just the the capability that children have now to create online i mean i i keep my kid away from that stuff i don't know how much longer i can do that but like just, just to create an ai movie with a couple clicks yeah i mean i can't imagine how that's going to change consciousness right so that it's right. a big factor yeah 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 and incredible yeah it's um yeah and what will change in the next hundred years is just not even we can't even conceptualize i think <laughs> exactly right. yeah so cool. So sh would it be a good time to look at some of the other cards here? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let me just... I know there was one you wanted to look at. Yeah. So, well, this is the, um, the tower card that I think you posted on, I think it was the 4th of July or around there when we were thinking about um, uh, patriotism and <laughs> Yeah. Um, this is a very, just a very striking image, and I love the thoughts that you shared in the post with this um, at that time. <laughs> Some of it was about Neptune and Neptune going into Aries. Yeah, yeah, I can speak to that. So um, first of all, a little context. If, if you're not familiar with the Tower card in the tarot, it is an archetype of, of everything falling apart, right? Structures falling down. Um, so it, it is one of the more intimidating cards to see in a spread. And it usually does involve lightning hitting a building uh, and often, you know, fire kind of belching out the top, right? So it's also seen as a release, like that there's been so much constraint under the surface and we kind of have to vent it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so the image here <clears throat> is South Carolina's secession. And so we have an image of the South on the left, which is um, the Sister Caroline, right, for South Carolina. And then the figure on the right is the precursor to Uncle Sam. So in that time we had brother Jonathan. So he was the symbol of the union. And they're both being ejected here. And uh, just to kind of root it in those times, you know, I talk about uh, these, these poets that spoke to each other. They're posing as Sister Caroline and brother Jonathan, right? And they're kind of speaking to each other. And uh, Caroline was being blamed because she uh, removed herself from the union. And then she confronts Brother Jonathan and says, right, the North benefits a lot from slave labor and you're a hypocrite, right? So it's kind of like saying like the whole edifice is rotten and it, it kind of needs to fall apart before it can come back together and be healed. Um, and I, I believe I posted this before 
Kamala announced her candidacy and, and Biden dropped out. And so I, I was feeling pretty hopeless. And just thinking a lot about like, okay, if everything falls apart, because it's not looking good right now, you know, if everything falls apart and, you know, I believe Trump wants to undermine democratic institutions, you know, so like wants to change the structure of the country. Um, I just talked about there being some beauty in breakdown and just uh, using it to find your own political sensibility and, and figure out what you believe in, that there can be power in that. And um, just to go on my soapbox here, I, I think it's something we've kind of lost in the United States. Like we're so complacent because everything's pretty good, you know, just not for everybody, but for most Americans, you know, it, it's pretty good and things kind of tick along. And so we don't have this idea of like, I need to be robustly attached to my values all the time and uh, ensure that they're maintained, you know, and be paying yeah. attention and be involved in a, a, as a civic person, right? So. Yeah, I, I, when I was first introduced to the tower card in the tarot, like long before, you know, you created this deck, um, I, I was learned about it as being a time of transformation, like a time when you have to um, let go of your comfort, your, you know, old things that um that have served you in the past and sort of crack that open to make way for the emergence of the new. And so that's the lens. I mean, not that that's different from what you're saying, but it's just my way of framing it for myself is, is when I see it through that lens, that's how I, you know, recognize like we must go forward and we can't go forward with the old some of the old ways of being. Yeah, that's very hopeful. That feels very Pluto and Aquarius to me. <laughs> kind of inventing the future. And yeah, um, yeah. I just want to say as a caveat here, um, this is in no way inspired by the January 6th attack. It was created like years before. I So I don't endorse that at all, but it, a lot of people just have made that connection, right? But I, I think that's mm-hmm. kind of what tarot can do. It can kind of like uncannily... Uh, mirror mirror the present you know absolutely yeah yeah and and you know sometimes things we don't know why things happen and uh we do our best to you know prevent quote unquote bad things from happening but of course we all have a different take on what that is and and sometimes things happen because they need to happen so so it's how we respond it's how we decide who we are uh, in in the wake of new information coming to the surface and um, wh- how it helps us to create the new and decide who we're going to be going forward. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. So um, so should we look at any other cards here? Yeah, that's up to you. OK. <laughs> oh, this one, the moon. <laughs> So it's, um, this, this feels very um, Neptunian. Um, yeah. And what's weird in Tara, so if you go back and look at the Golden Dawn signatures and what each card represents, this is actually the Pisces card. Mm. It's not funny. So it's the moon, but the moon is represented by the priestess. And so, like, this represents Pisces. And so, um, this is a representation of that spiritualist movement I've been referring to. And it, it had such improbable beginnings of these two teen girls talking to the devil or talking to the spirit of a murdered peddler and it just sounds so classic you know kind of slumber party 14 year old girls playing around um and yet it became a national movement so how neptune and pisces is that right Mm -hmm. i mean (laughs) just it's just such a wild origin story so yeah and then um the the moon in tarot uh captures a sense of like not seeing reality clearly Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we have this big full moon in the image and we know how heightened and distorted reality can get under mm-hmm. a full moon, right? We, can, we might lose control or, you know, lose objectivity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I really enjoy this image a lot. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that. And I, I love the the way that, you know, I mean, astrology and tarot are, are linked and in ways we might know and ways we might not know 
going back to their origins, but um, but it's really, it's cool to see how you've brought them together with these cards. And can you speak just a moment to who was the artist who? Oh, sure. Um, her name is Celeste Pilly and I've never met her in person and uh, she's from Nebraska. And so the whole project was conducted over email, emailed communication between mm -hmm. California and Nebraska. So she did some amazing work here. And um, what I liked about her style is that uh, it seemed very modern. And, and so I was trying to think of a way to make these kind of old books, old stories, you know, dry old dusty history. Like, how do I bring that into the 21st century and make that interesting to young people? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I think you yeah. really need that. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. You, you guys really um, amazing collaboration and, and the art is just incredible. Um, this one now so what is this one referring to okay so um it's a reference to harriet jacobs and uh she was an enslaved woman mm -hmm. and then this is this from her narrative after she escapes so she wrote this narrative about first seeing the sunrise on free soil it gives me chills just still Ooh. talking about it um, oh yeah you know, i've read this book you know so many times i've taught this book um but she talks about seeing the first sunrise as a free woman and uh god it gets me all choked up still um and you know we're paying some homage to the artist kara walker here you know using the silhouettes um mm -hmm. and uh philadelphia had a large free black population so it was you know pretty important stop on the underground railroad uh, so that's where she was heading, but I was kind of playing on this older idea of Philadelphia and that that theme of of brotherhood, right? Or we could just say like fellowship. I'm, you know, there's not really a great non gendered word we could use here, right? But that sense of like we're all brothers and sisters, and you know, we're all equals here. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, uh, what I love is how honestly sort of the themes in the deck are are talking about you know some of these deeper themes of you know our problematic origins um you know the contradictions of <laughs> all men are created equal and how, yeah how how we grapple with that i'm i'm so glad you brought that up so i i know we um are both teaching a class right now on mm -hmm political agency right and how we can contribute to that and so um this is one of the cards I want to talk about in the class because in the book I talked about this kind of uh you know new era of freedom mm -hmm. right and this new ethos of like you know all people are created equal and like like having America make good on that but in the book there's this moment right where <laughs> you know she's seeing the the sunrise on free soil but she's also really angry and there's a lot of sarcasm and a, just a, a just a lot of rage that comes out in the same scene. And I didn't mm. put that in the book, you know, I kind of mm. that out, but just kind of carrying both those things. It's like um, later, so, so what happens in her story, she escapes to freedom, but her former enslaver was so obsessed with her that he just kept stalking her in the north and was like sending people to go look for her and she was just never comfortable so finally the woman that she was working for bought her you know she gave that guy 300 bucks or whatever it was at the time and it's like there's that tension it's like she's so relieved but she's also so furious that like someone would put a, a dollar amount on a person you sure. know yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's all of those those paradoxes and that tension. It just ugh, still gets me. Yeah, boy. Yeah. yeah. And and how um, how I think especially going back to the tower card and, you know, if America gets a chance to reinvent itself. Yeah. You know, what does that look like and how do we heal this and how do we do it differently? And um okay the bringing to consciousness of what has been in the shadow and, you know, so, so next year, and I'm just, I'm going to stop this here, but um, uh, next year, right. We have several planets changing signs 
<laughs> so some significant energy shifts. What what are what are your thoughts about next year? And oh gosh, okay. Well, yeah. you know, not to not to spook everybody, but um, <laughs> Neptune went into Aries in the 19th century. The first shots were fired on Fort Sumter within a day, right? I mean, that was like the exact start of the Civil War. So because of that history in our country, I'm a little trepidatious mm -hmm. about Neptune moving into Aries. Um, you know, my sense is that this focus on the inner that we've been in while Neptune is in Pisces, I think it, it can get more external when Neptune is in Aries and we recognize there's a lot of literal fires we need to put out, you know, not just with like various conflicts around the world, but just with the state of the environment, like things are on fire. I mean, and, and it requires like strong, just decisive action to change that. Right. And Aries is great at that. Like yeah. I'm going to stand up, you know, just that kind of, I don't know, Greenpeace ethic. Like, let's just go <laughs> be in the face of like these corporate entities that, that are polluting the planet and, you know, to just stand in our power. So yeah, old economic structures that are not in this higher vibration of consciousness, you know, that so Neptune is helping us maybe get in touch with the possibilities. And then Neptune going into Aries could help us take the action that we need to be decisive and make things change. I, I love that. And, you know, that, of course, is backing up the the movement right of um Saturn and Pisces also moving into Aries right so um, they're both making that transition and that was kind of my thought reflecting on the last Saturn and Pisces era and so I, I did actually like a reflection reading I love doing these reflection readings so I get people to tell me like well what were you doing last time you know <laughs> like and um it, yeah. I think the last Saturn and Pisces period it felt like well, I raised my consciousness, but I couldn't do anything about it. It's kind of stuck. And then when Saturn went into Aries, I made all those decisions. I was brave, right? I changed my life and, you know, I overcame these stuck structures. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, that's so cool. And we have, so my, my mind is spinning with ideas. So, so first of all, I'm thinking we've got, Pluto going from an earth sign to an air sign. We've got Neptune going from a water sign to a fire sign. So we're going from the earth, water, more feminine, more like let's feel the vibe and, and change who we're being and how we ground it to the like action oriented idea based, you know, and, and this is going to be like the background of everything. So, yeah, so kind of filter through <laughs> at the way that we think about everything, the, the, yeah, the, the our experience um, could feel very different. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because I, 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 I practice astrology as the, the Pluto babe, right? <laughs> I love Pluto. And, um, you know, there's that promise of Pluto and Aquarius where all of our individual needs might be represented within a national structure, but we want to remember like, well, we have to do the shadow part first, right? And that shadow part of Pluto and Aquarius is conformity, you know? And I, I think that's something we struggle with, like all being on social media now is like, you have to just be on one side or the other. And if you like someone's opinion that it's not totally clear whose side they're on, or they once voted the wrong way, it's like, you'll kind of be held liable for which side are you on, you know? Yeah. And you, you say yeah. you're first, but you also, and I, I think that is a lot of the shadow that's going to be transformed as, as we enter into this new era. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so Aquarius being that, like, we are all equal idea, but we have the lower versions of that and the higher versions, which is we can work together to bring about change. Yeah. That's the exciting part, right? That's the yeah. good news. Yeah. That but, you know, we might get past all our own issues and like understand that we do have to have a civic identity. And I, I think so many people just want to dial it in. They just want to vote or, you know, just choose something like we're ordering food online or something. And it's like, that's not, it's not how it works. You got to go out and like get with the people. And yeah. Right. Yeah. 
building community. Yeah, that's uh, and it, the, that's such a good point about the shadow work. Mm -hmm. We had shadow work to do with Pluto and Capricorn from 2008 until 2023-24. Yeah. We, we are going to have shadow work to do with Pluto in Aquarius as well. And so what will that look like really? Yeah. And 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 t speaking about AI and technology and like what is the dark side of that and what do we need to but but Pluto is ultimately about healing and transformation if you confront it consciously, right? So we have this opportunity to really move through things, come out on the other side, shift our consciousness. Yeah, I'm I'm also just getting sparked a lot by all the things that you're saying and um just thinking about how Pluto rules over wells, right? And so um in the mm, Pluto Capricorn wealth. Yeah, wealth, yeah, yeah. 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 Um and and power, right? So in, and wealth is power. And and so um just we've had the rise of the the oligarchs, you know. <laughs> like the plutocrats under this period where the the wealth inequality in this country has just skyrocketed right so it's like that kind of i don't know and i i noticed this in the spiritual community as well um that you know 20 years ago it it was cool not to care about money like if you were in the spiritual community and now it's like we have like oh the more prosperous you are the more <laughs> successful and spiritual i don't know it's just weird it's like yeah it's changed right the so more, yeah like we've kind of sold out to that um pluto and cap value like the dark side that the you know these outward shows of power and success like oh you must be really really spiritual or really advanced and so i'm i'm hoping if we move into pluto and aquarius we distribute that wealth to the people again do you know what i mean like yeah. that would be, yeah that would be a great yeah. outcome so yeah, so many right, so many problematic structures that aren't really going to be um, sustainable in right. in so many ways. I mean, and we can keep holding on to them and crash and burn, or we can really yeah. do the work to reform. And yeah, and and the other thing that was spark being sparked for me is about the Saturn Neptune conjunction, which is a really big deal for alignments next year. So, um, right, so the planet of spirituality and ambivalence and amorphous, you know, <laughs> but like un can be very unclear or uh, disillusioning. And then the, the energy of Saturn, which is concrete and about form and structure. Yeah, I <clears throat> love that you brought that up and just um, where my mind went intuitively, you know, I think of Aries as a kind of like, do it yourself energy um like you're not waiting to be told you're not waiting for the other guy to do it and there's this kind of um, majesty of the self right there's that it's that first sign and so there's this kind of entitlement and so i i just was thinking about um saturn and neptune together being the flourishing of lots of little communities like hmm. what we're doing in this place where we are that's good enough and that's important right we can bring that kind of fire affirmation of like you know our expressions matter um, and that Neptune sort of like blurring the boundaries, right? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I hope that is what comes to pass <laughs> that we we deepen into our communities and make these little pockets of, you know, like a, this idea of America can't represent everybody. It just can't, right? We're too different. We're, we're so many different types of people in this nation. And so just having our own robust communities where we have um, the power to express our desires and yeah, yeah, yeah. And the um the Pollyanna like fantasy of, you know, there's something about letting go of of the the junk food, right? Like that the junk food answer of saying, Oh, it's all gonna be, you know, this perfect world and the realism of Saturn that says, No, you know, you you have to do the work, you have to compromise, you have to build things in in within the limitations. Yeah. That are here. Yeah. You know, I, I had such a powerful insight a few minutes ago, but we, we went off to other things. But yeah, I was thinking about how um, people who are able to say they like America or feel good about it. A lot of times we do go back to the Civil War 
to say like, well, look, we made, we did a good thing then, you know, like Lincoln freed the slaves. And I mean, this is like ancient at this point, right? It happened so long ago or, or people might go back to like World War II, we sure, you know, showed up. So I was just thinking like this, this time is so pivotal uh, mm -hmm. with Neptune going into Aries. And it's like, oh, we need a new narrative. We can't rest on like, oh, we did this great stuff in the past, like in order to feel good about the United States, we need to reform it, you know, speaking of the tower card, right? Like we need to knock down the old edifice and build something that we can get excited about. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, I, I Narrative is such a powerful word and it helps us organize. It allows us to create a new consciousness, right? Or to shift in consciousness to, to kind of, declare what's important to us and why and and the neptune in pisces since 2011 has been this time period where we've had you know the this the introduction of sort of lies as a way of telling a narrative <laughs> like if i say the false thing enough times it will become true and it's like wait how did that just happen and yeah. I'm I'm so with you there, and I <laughs> would add um, the influence too of America's Pluto return, um, which to me just felt like the sort of tunnel of shadow work. And so, what I notice, like putting out this deck at this time, is just that there's, especially with people on the left, there's a lot of like shame mm -hmm. and like self hatred and disdain of being an American. So we can't say, I'm I'm proud to be an American. You know most people on the left are not going to say that, right? And so um, what just strikes me is like, it's it's really like healing from trauma. And so um, if you've done that before, and I'm sure a lot of people in your audience have gone through that experience, and I have, it, it's like, all you can see is the trauma when you're healing, right? You can't see the, the brightness on the other side. You can only see the shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and so just like when you were talking about the power of narrative, what I notice is that the narrative um, on the left recently has been very self-hating, you know, and I, I was with a friend on 4th of July and she just, she just said something like, oh, we hate ourselves or something. And I was like, this is terrible. <laughs> like this, nothing's yeah. going to go in this. We can't do this. Right. Um, and so I just, I don't know, something about what you said around distorted narratives. I think the the narrative around the United States has been distorted on the left because all we're seeing is the shamefulness of our history and it is shameful, right? Native American genocide, uh, African-American uh, chattel slavery. I mean, there's a lot there and there's a lot more too, but that's not all there is, right? So that's that was kind of the corrective I was trying to make with this deck. Like, let's mm -hmm. look for the beauty, let's look for the inspiration, right? Let's focus on the people that uh, did something creative and powerful in their times. So I, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm also happy we're coming out of the Pluto return because <laughs> I I I think we're going to be able to you know especially in this this uh, upcoming election too it feels like we're moving on a little bit right that we can focus on the future and not just be so mired in um, the the shame of the past. So. Such such good points. I mean, um, I I love how you think about things, and that's partly why I invited you to come talk with me. It's it's um it's so powerful to think about where we've gotten it wrong right and and um it, yeah the the narrative of like well if we want to if we actually want to improve if we actually want to heal to get better just like we would for our own selves and our own personal growth work it's like yes we have to look at what is not serving that healing process and um it, yeah you have to feel the feelings you have to confront the trauma but then you have to keep moving yeah exactly it's the integration right yeah, yeah. and you there there has to be a future you can believe in because otherwise you're just re-traumatizing yeah over again so yeah yeah there was such a like with the 2016 election you know, such, I think, a visceral reaction of wanting to shrink, wanting to hide, mm. wanting to make it all go away. And 
uh, the, the shock and the, and, and so it really, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That happened. And, and we got through it and, you know, and it, we're still here creating the world we live in and how are we going to make choices? Yeah. I mean, that, that for me was such a, a tower card. <laughs> yeah. It's like all this stuff that got vented with Trump's presidency. And it's like, I didn't know those forces were out there, you know, and I think that's partly white privilege, right? So I um I had a black therapist at the time and that was like when, you know, the outcome of the election happened and I was like, I'm just so shocked that there's so many racists out there. And she's like, I'm not. And I was like, right, right. <laughs> Good point. So, yeah, no, that, yeah. I got checked. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. it, it, I think it is good to to see that out there, like kind of know that we're still very much a divided country, and there is that huge section of the populace that, to me, like needs education, needs intervention, <laughs> you know, needs healing. Yeah, uh, just and and not to just like empathize with racists, but I I think that. um you know, when, when people are feeling that way, when they're externalizing their problems onto someone else, it's like, it's because they're being underserved, right? So I, I think that, right. you know, this is, this is what we're facing as America that, you know, if people feel like they, they have enough, they're not going to attack someone else. So. Yeah. And if you had a family member, you know, who was going down a dark path, you know, if you think about it from that perspective, like, obviously you don't want to get sucked down with them. But at the same time, you want to do what you can to support their, their making changes. So yeah, that's a really good analogy. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. So uh, this has been such an incredible um, conversation. It, it's so good to have the, the, you know, the dialogue and um, tell us a little bit. So tell us, we'll include a link for how to, purchase your cards and and the uh, workshop you have coming up sure yeah so um I sell the cards on Amazon I don't sell them myself the the box that they come in is huge so the shipping it's just I can't compete with Amazon on that so um you can find them there and then I'm doing a six-week workshop just for people who want kind of a behind the scenes look at the cards so um we'll we'll do a little history and then in the second hour I just want to leave open to kind of uh, process election stress and the different things that are coming up all the time has just been such a wild ride and I know we're all anxious. And so um, just to kind of look at how the cards can help us address some of the questions that Marina and I have been discussing, you know, the past hour, just like how, like what, what interpersonal work can we do to be present through this time? So. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And I have my uh, boosting freedom and democracy reading available as well. So that's another uh, resource for support um, in, in getting some insight from your own chart in terms of how you can best support this process and be your best self, share your gifts and, and make a, a positive difference. If we, like we've been talking about here, you know, we are both so much about how can we take this, what, you know, what we have, what the energies are in the moment and work with them in the most positive and powerful ways to bring about healing, empowerment, consciousness, to do our human evolutionary work that is really the reason we're here. Exactly. I love that you are putting out this offering. So mm. I, I just thought that was that's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. So yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, your work is incredible too. Um, I'm just in awe. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. And uh, check out, uh, oh, hit the subscribe button for Astrology for Unshakable Self-Care, and we'll give you some links for uh, Thea's, to access more of Thea's stuff. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Mark, it was a pleasure.